So today I'm going to talk about the battery setup for my off-grid system. These are batteries I have purchased and installed by myself. I am not a affiliate of these uh, companies. I am not a solar installer. <clears throat> Please do not take my recommendations as good advice. This is purely what I've done you know, for myself. That being said, I've got these four Shoto batteries uh, that I hooked up to my the uh, inverter. <coughs> now I decided to use Shoto's because my brother-in-law is a solar installer and he made the recommendation to use it with this particular inverter. And I've been using now from I've been using them now for about the last uh, three months and I'm very happy with the performance. Uh, the installation was uh, really quite quite straightforward. So these are uh, 5 kilowatt hours each, so that gives me a total of 20 kilowatt hours installed capacity. Uh, each of these batteries are I think 100 amp hours. They each have a uh, recommended charge and discharge current of 50 amps. Right, that's 0.5 C. If you hook them up in parallel, like I've done, then you can get uh, 200 amps uh, quite safely out of out of four batteries. Now it comes with this little booklet that shows you all the stuff about how to hook it up and. There are basically two connection methods. One is kind of this daisy chain method, which is useful if you're going to uh, remain under 100 amps. The other way to look it up is purely to run them all in parallel, like this picture over here, in which case you can then exceed the 100 amp limit. Okay, and then there's a setup idea for the dip switches on the, on the battery, and uh, let's have a look at that. Alright, so let's have a look at the dip switches. This is my basically my master. That's its dip switch setting. It's got the network cable, and these are just network cables as far as a Cat5 network cable. It goes directly to the inverter, and which is not open at the moment, but it just sticks into that port for the inverter. And then these two go to the other other battery banks. And I don't think there's any particular uh, preference which one goes which way. So, master, this will be the uh, the second one, this will be another one, and this will be yet another one. And of course they are all uh, grounded as well, network cables, and then the two battery terminals uh, are basically just connected over here for every battery. Right, they all go together into what's essentially is a bus bar. So there's uh, four four battery wires coming onto one bolt over here, and there's another four going to this one bolt over here. So there's purely four batteries connected in parallel. Sorry, let's just try this way to my DC breaker, which can do 250 amps. That's then connected to my two main feeders for the battery to the inverter. Now, as with most electrical stuff, connections can be problematic because that's potentially where your highest resistance resides. So what I've done is, this is currently running, I think, at, uh, well, up to 5 kilowatt now that it's charging at. So that's around about 100 amps. That's currently coursing through these wires. And these terminals are cool to the touch. So, and I've done this before as well, I just checked. There's, uh, you know, these things are pretty much at room temperature, which is kind of just a rough guide to check whether I've got any issues with connections over here. Right, so four battery packs uh, connected in parallel. <coughs> these first two batteries on the right hand side 
they were connected in May. That's about four months ago. It's now in September. So I had to save up some money to get the, the other two in place, which was quite recent. Um, now when you connect up these batteries, when you get them from the store in the box and you take them out, they're sitting at about 70% charged. And uh, that's uh, <coughs> that gives you well, they should all be kind of be at the same charge level. So theoretically, you can then just you know, connect them up in the installation the way you know, either via the first diagram or the second diagram. Um, if the state of charge and the voltage are the same between the batteries, then you know, it should be safe to hook them up. Um, I'm a be well. I know my brother-in-law's not that pragmatic. I think he just assumes that the battery management pack BMS battery management system will take care of any differences in the voltage. Um, I'm a bit more uh, careful, so I thought I would charge the batteries individually to 100% state of charge, and then connect them up. At that point, they should have the same voltage, and there's no chance of one battery uh, kind of uh, charging the other battery. For example, if you have a two volt difference between two batteries and the internal resistance and the resistance of the wires is let's say a 0 0.1 ohm, then you are going to be having a 200 amp current flowing between the batteries, even with a two volt difference. Uh, it could be that the battery, battery management system will take care of this and throttle the, the charging I, uh, I didn't feel like taking that chance with these <coughs> excuse me with these really expensive batteries. So what I did is I just individually charged each battery, um, checked it while it was charging, verified the BMS that it was all good, disconnected the whole thing, connected the next battery, charging up to 100%, and then when they're all at 100%, then I connected them. All right. Now, as I said there. The two batteries on the left hand side, they got uh, added a bit later, so they are uh, not as used as the right hand side batteries. Um, potentially there might be some differences between the charge rates of these batteries because these ones are effectively newer, but I think I think the guideline is something like six months worth of, of time needs to be elapsed before you can add batteries to the same pack. I'm reasonably comfortable that uh, they can be connected to the older batteries. But the good thing about doing that, in my mind, is that if I should re be replacing batteries like this in maybe 10 years, then I'll probably replace these two first, wait a couple of months and then replace these two. Depending on what's available in the market at that point, we might not do that. I don't know yet. We'll see. Right. So. On the battery setup or on the inverter side, <coughs> um, if we go to the battery setup, well, this is the battery view, um, and the BMS details are over here. All right. So if you can see this, that means your batteries are communicating with your inverter. Once again, with the Shotos, I've not had any issues with this. I really just plugged in the cable, set up the dip switches, and it's you know it just works. Um, on the setup side, these are set to lithium. <coughs> um, in your inverter manual, I think you can set the type of lithium. Let me just check where that is. Okay. Yeah. So you have this lithium mode, um, I think mine was just set up the way it should have been. I kept the default, so shutting on, shut down at 20%, low battery at 35% and restart at 50%. Uh, this stuff I fiddled with and was doing the, uh, the uh, generator charge, I haven't needed to charge them with the generator yet. so. Don't take this as a as a guideline. I'm still fiddling with this. Um, yeah. So my settings at the moment are for 100 amp charge, 100 amp discharge. Uh, you can probably boost this up to 200 amps. 
but um, I'm comfortable with these devils. Alright, so <clears throat> that's a little bit about the batteries. Um, like I say, I've had them now for three months. At least these two on the right hand side, and I'm quite happy with the performance. They are lasting the, uh, the whole properties uh, using them. They are lasting quite well throughout the night, and um, yeah, happy days. So, <coughs> I'm hoping uh, some of this information is, uh, is useful to somebody out there. Uh, if you're doing this yourself, just uh, remember, be careful, be prudent, and um, enjoy what you're doing. Cheers.